Let's keep on trucking on the journey to translate the Japanese guidebook, the Biohazard 4 Kaitai Shinsho. The next chapter in my sights? Monsters. Guess after this, there'll be one less to worry about. This was a big chapter at about 80 pages, covering creature lore, attacks, and the minute details I love from these books. Maybe you've seen this info before, but it's my mission at Raccoon City Cinema to go through it, so... I'm afraid I have to tell you anyway. With that said, let's get the show on the road, which is exactly where we'll start. Truck. A truck driven by a Ganado. He will even send his allies flying as he comes crashing in. If he smashes into you, it's game over, so be sure to shoot it before that happens. After you see the explosion under the hood, you'll know its HP is at zero, and it'll roll over and crash into a predetermined location. On the road to the castle, be careful not to get too far ahead as you'll be crushed by the overturned vehicle. By the way, hitting the driver once will make the truck roll over. Or try using an egg. Ganado. Humans whose behavior is controlled by the Plaga Parasite. They have been robbed of reason by the parasite's assimilation into the central nervous system, and it attacks people according to the Plaga's survival instinct. Even in such a condition, they retain their human intelligence, and it's possible to communicate their will with each other by exchanging words. In combat, they can wield a variety of weapons, set traps, and organize actions to pursue their target. A Ganado usually waits or roams a designated path. But when it hears gunfire, Leon's voice, or is in close proximity, it will take action. They'll usually take the shortest path, but when game rank is high, they'll surround Leon at an angle. Attacks to the head will deal 1.2 times damage, 5 times if it's with a rifle, and 10 times if it's a critical hit. Damage to armor is reduced to 25%. Damage to cultists is reduced to 56%, and militants receive about 46% of damage. A quick grab that tightens around the neck, and then throws for additional damage. This attack may randomly reduce health to one hit point, with a higher probability when game rank is high. If grabbed from behind, you may be held for others. Ashley will only be choked until the attacker is pushed away. In the case of the Dynamite Ganado, it will self-destruct instead of a throw, resulting in instant death. Counterattack with kicks or elbows dealing 100 damage, to avoid being thrown or blown up. Good advice. The amount of damage is different for each type of Ganado. Cultists wearing black deal 1.1 times damage, cultists wearing purple deal 1.3 times, red ones do 1.5 times, and militants do 1.6. Other attacks are affected by Ganado type as well, so I'll put a note on screen for those. And to put the damage values into context, here are the hit point numbers for each character if you want to pause it and check it out. To make this video shorter, simple attacks where a Ganado steps forward while swinging the weapon, either the knife, axe, sickle, or torch, each do 380 damage. The axe and sickle damage is affected by Ganado type. The pitchfork is a piercing attack that also does 380 damage, but sometimes it'll be done without stepping forward. It swings a flail above its head before attacking. A push with the shield, it will knock the target over. It swings a big scythe sideways while stepping in. It hits and holds the stun rod. A downward attack that will knock the target over if hit. The axe or sickle flies in a parabolic trajectory, during which it can be shot down. After throwing it, the Ganado is unarmed and may pull a spare weapon from its waist. How you might ask? Do you really want to know? A giant scythe is thrown in a straight line and can be shot down. After throwing it, the Ganado becomes unarmed. Dynamite flies in a parabolic trajectory and explodes after about 1.1 seconds, or if it hits something. Only for certain Ganados, even if you stop them from throwing it by dealing damage, it will explode in 1.5 seconds. It will also explode if you shoot the thrown dynamite, or shoot the elbow of the one holding it. It'll also explode about 3 seconds after you've been grabbed. After inhaling, it blows on a torch to shoot flames forward. Touch the flames and you'll continue to take damage for a period of time. After taking aim, it will fire the bowgun twice. The projectile can be shot down. Rockets fly in a straight line and explode when they hit something. After firing, the Ganado is unarmed. A lit rock is sent flying and explodes when it hits something. Flame from the mouth of a dragon-shaped cannon. Enemies that touch the flames will continue to take damage for a time. Continuous fire from a Gatling gun for about 4 seconds. If it hits the target, it will stop shooting. What hospitality! 
This won't be the last time I talk about Ganado, because I have this. And yeah, I will make a video out of it someday. Chainsaw Man. A Ganado that uses a logging chainsaw as a weapon. Perhaps because it has adapted too well to its assimilation with a parasite, it is dominated by a strong destructive impulse, and will relentlessly chase what it perceives as the enemy while swinging its chainsaw. Its body is tougher than a normal Ganado, and it won't be defeated with just a few bullets. Headshots do 1.2 times damage. The guide recommends using powerful weapons, like the shotgun or rifle, to make it flinch. But the giant chainsaw man in the Mercenaries minigame can't be flinched so easily and recommends grenades or flash grenades. Damage to the giant chainsaw man is reduced to 46%. The chainsaw man in front of the northeast gate of the village center has the property of not moving away from the gate as long as he has enough hit points. I saw a really cool trick from the YouTuber Sack, and basically the Chainsaw Sisters can be defeated with Leon's elbows. If you make Ashley wait and stand nearby her, put your back to the Chainsaw Sisters and you'll be able to take them down in one hit. If you like that, I highly recommend checking out the full video by Sack because there's so many more cool secrets. Links are in the description. A cut with a chainsaw, and I'm showing the censored Japanese version in line with YouTube's policies. It chases the enemy while swinging the chainsaw around. Gatling Man A Ganado with an electric Gatling gun. It indiscriminately sprays large caliber rounds in the hopes of finding enemies. Originally, such firearms are heavy with strong recoil, so they must be fitted to a mount, but it has acquired the muscular strength to handle them from the parasite. Furthermore, the body is highly resistant to damage, even withstanding a direct hit from a rifle shot to the head. Headshots will do 1.2 times the damage, make it flinch, and maybe knock off his cool beret. After swinging the Gatling gun, it aims at the target and shoots for about 5 seconds. If the target is hit, or goes behind the Gatling man, the attack will stop immediately. It swings the Gatling gun sideways and knocks the target down. Ganado Plaga When a normal Ganado changes to a Ganado Plaga, it will have 3000 hit points. The Plaga emerges from the body. Since the Ganado has lost the function of its brain due to damage and whatnot, the parasite itself controls the body, and its movements appear somewhat mechanical and awkward. There are three types of Ganado Plaga, A, B, and C. Type A is a juvenile Plaga. It will attack by swinging its tentacle with a sharp edge. Type B can crush prey with its powerful jaws and spit acid from its mouth. Type C is when it reaches adulthood and can attack by biting. The book says Type B is capable of spitting acid, but only Type C does this in gameplay. So maybe canonically Type B can do it, but in gameplay it's only Type C. Only the Type C parasite can detach from the body and act as a Plaga. The book says fight from a distance, or dodge the attack and run in close for a knife attack followed by a kick. Or kill it instantly with a flash grenade. Only two Ganado Plaga can appear at the same time. Be careful, if your flash grenade falls into the water, the light won't reach the enemy. It will only die instantly from the flash grenade if the parasite is out. From Chapter 2-1, parasites may appear from the necks of defeated Ganados. However, it won't appear if you use these methods. There are some Ganado where the parasite doesn't appear. Shoot the parasite for 2.4 times the damage. 10 times if hit with a rifle, and 20 times for a critical hit. If you attack a part other than the parasite, damage will be reduced to 66%. Damage is reduced to 25% when you attack armor. The Cultist Ganado will take only 56% damage. Militant Ganado will take only 46%. It swings the tentacle forward and down, and then swings it widely to the side. It waves its tentacle. This attack is used continuously except immediately after receiving damage or using the strong tentacle attack. Parasite A will do this attack regardless of distance. It spits strongly acidic liquid that is accumulated in its mouth forward. After pulling back its head, it swings outward and bites. If Parasite B's attack hits, it will cause instant death. Plaga, a parasite that has lost its host. It acts alone, but its survival time is very short, and if left alone, it will weaken and die, so it crawls around in search of a new host. When it finds a compatible organism, it pounces at once in the aim of invading its body. You can easily defeat it by standing still and shooting. Even if you don't move, its attack will often miss. If you wait about 30 seconds, it'll just die. It'll also die instantly from a flash grenade. It leaps forward, and if it hits, will cling to the opponent's face. It'll deal extra damage when pulled off. If you successfully shake the left stick, you won't take the additional damage. 
Colmio, a dog parasitized by the Plaga. Due to assimilation, its fangs have developed abnormally so they don't fit inside its mouth. With agile movements, it bites down on the windpipe of its prey. Furthermore, the parasite extends countless tentacles that pierce through the body of the host to attack with. Perhaps due to the host being a herd-forming animal by nature, behavioral control through the Plaga is extremely stable and is characterized by several colmios forming packs to attack their target. If you walk forward with your back to the colmio, it won't move, so you can move away and keep your distance. I've seen strategies from people like Carcinogen SDA, whereby looking up, you're less likely to be attacked. It leaps forward, and if hit, will knock the target over, hold it down, and bite. If you shake the stick, you can push it away without taking additional damage, but you will receive all 10 times 59 damage. It swings its tentacles back and forth, and if it makes contact, will hit the target continuously. Novistador, an insect human created through applied experiments of the Plaga. It has the mimicry ability to freely change the color of its outer shell covering its body, allowing it to await prey by blending in with its surroundings. Although it's based on a human, its ecology is that of an insect. It flies with wings on its back, and breeds in giant nests they make. There are many defects that can't use the mimicry camouflage, and they form large swarms to attack their enemies. Stealth has its own movement range, and if Leon goes out of that range, it will wait at the very edge of the limit, or return to the place it started from. It can be defeated in the air with one or two shots, in fact, when flying, damage taken is 18 or 25 times higher, with the exception of incendiaries. Headshots deal 1.25 times damage, instant death with a rifle. It scratches with the claws of one hand as it steps forward. When it clings to a wall, it leans forward to scratch, or stretches its body and swings them. It sprays forward a strong acidic liquid built up in its mouth. It pounces quickly, grabbing the target, and then spits out a highly acidic liquid twice. Again, here is the censored Japanese version. If you shake the stick, it will reduce the number of times you're hit to one. It leaps quickly and kicks away after catching its target. The target will be knocked down if the hit lands. After crouching down, it jumps to catch its prey. It will kick away and knock down the target. Press the square button to counterattack for 100 damage, and knock the Navistador down. It pulls back its left arm, then jumps up to cut with its claws. If you press the square button, you'll counterattack for 100 damage and knock the Navistador down. It happens under the following conditions. Your health gauge is yellow-red. The Navistador is on the ground. You are about 3 to 4 meters away from the enemy. There's a low probability it'll be used. Garador, an experiment using the Plaga to strengthen the body. It succeeded in attaining superior physical abilities, but because it indiscriminately attacked anything in sight, there was no choice but to sew its eyelids shut and they are usually restrained. In place of its deprived eyesight, its sense of hearing has developed abnormally, and once released onto the battlefield, will rely on sounds to find the positions of enemies and thoroughly hunt them down with the claws on both arms. It wildly swings the claws on both hands. Until the attack ends, the damage will decrease from 640, 320 to 160 damage each time the attack hits. Damage will not be less than 160. After squaring up, it runs straight and thrusts its right claw. If it hits a wall or pillar, the claw will get stuck and it won't be able to move for a time. Normally, Garador walks around in search mode, but it changes to attack mode when it hears a sound. Here are the loudness of main actions. Actions not listed here are silent apparently. That includes using a silencer, kicking a lock, and using an egg, I think? Maybe? Attacking a part other than the parasite will only deal 7% damage. Attacking armor deals 1.8% damage. Armadura. Armor that adorned the castle, manipulated by Plaga lurking inside. A parasite wandering in search of a host made its way inside the suit of armor and entered a dormant state to maintain its life. It becomes active when it senses prey nearby. Its stretched tentacles become pseudo-muscles, and it walks as if a human were inside and can swing its weapon around. However, its movements are slow and awkward. After slowly raising the weapon, it swings it forward. There's no difference in the type of weapon. Horizontal Slash A quick sideways swing of the weapon. Again, there's no difference in type. When health drops below 500, or the head takes around 100 damage, a Parasite A will appear from the Silver Knight, and a Parasite B will appear from the Black Knight. The Silver Knight will use a weak tentacle attack, and the Black Knight will use a bite attack. Damage to the Parasite is tripled. 
It doesn't take damage until it starts walking. It's not damaged by incendiary grenades. Regenerator. A monster created through an experiment in which multiple Plaga were implanted into a single person. As a result of the experiment, even if a body part is lost, it has acquired abnormal metabolic abilities that allows it to almost instantly regenerate. Although it retains human form, its physical structure has changed into something else completely. Such changes extend to the brain, leaving no ability to think as a human. What is this? Come on, let's go. Iron Maiden, an improved type of regenerator with additional procedures. Equipped with an incredible metabolic capacity, there are countless spikes all over its body that can expand or contract freely. In battle, it can grab and pull in prey with its long arms, and can pierce the full body of its target with its spikes. It was given the name Iron Maiden because of its likeness to the torture device that existed in Europe in the 16th century. Damaging body parts will only limit their attacks, and they'll regenerate in about 10 seconds. Health is calculated at 1000 hit points times the number of parasites. It's weak to incendiary grenades, which do the same amount of damage as one destroyed parasite. Wait until it recovers until throwing another grenade. The book says destroy the legs with a shotgun and then run in with a knife. I totally forgot the GameCube had the alternate scope. It swings one arm down with great force. It's used only by regenerators, it knocks down the target when hit. A large number of spikes extend from the entire body. It attacks after the upper body is turned away, and if the attack lands, it bites around the neck and will continue to deal damage until pushed off. If you struggle with the left stick, you will push it off faster, and damage can be reduced to about 20 by 20 times. The number of inputs required with the left stick increases in relation to your current game rank. It extends its arms forward to grab and pull the target close, and then bites around the neck until it's pushed off. From a laying position, it attacks with a big jump, and if it hits, it will bite around the neck and continue until it's pushed off. It extends its arms and pulls the target into the spikes coming from its body. If its arms or legs are damaged, it will limit which attacks can be performed. If a parasite is hit by a rifle shot, the parasite will be destroyed and the body will take 1000 damage. Del Lago, a massive aquatic organism over 20 meters long. Its true identity is a giant salamander that was used as an experiment sample using the Plaga. As the parasite grew, it gained the physical abilities to move through the water reminiscent of a fish. Unfortunately, the Plaga was unable to control it, which was the original purpose of the experiment, and it was sealed away in the village lake. After surfacing, it smashes its body into the boat, knocking Leon down. This attack never drops Leon below one hit point. It opens its mouth to swallow Leon whole. It usually does a knockdown attack from nearby, but it may hide in the water for a while and launch an attack from afar. The order in which it attacks is not completely determined, and will basically do a pattern one to three times before doing the other pattern. Just be careful not to shoot the wa- Oh, the Magnum does it in one hit. I see. El Gigante, a giant born from applied experiments with the parasite. It's a human parasitized by the Plaga and genetically manipulated to be gigantic. It's about four times the size of a normal person. That giant body not only possesses outstanding power, but also durability and can shrug off ordinary rounds from a firearm. Like Del Lago, the defect of control difficulties could not be improved, and they were only produced in small numbers. El Gigante doesn't die if its health drops to zero. At that point, the parasite will emerge. If you climb and are fast enough, you can cut up to 8 times and take more than half its health. Each knife attack does 70 damage to the parasite. The book says you can push both X and square buttons, or their equivalents, no problem. If you're not fast, the book recommends the magnum or shotgun. If the following conditions are met, the parasite will return to the host body. It has 3 punching attacks that all do 800 damage and knock Leon down. The punch, uppercut, and hook. The uppercut and hook look so similar, so here's a picture in case I showed the wrong video. It brings both hands together and swings them down. This knocks the target down and will break huts and rocks. Kick, a frontal kick that will knock the target down. It stomps with its foot to knock Leon down. A grab with the right hand, and when caught, will tighten with both hands. The attack finishes with a throw to the ground. If Leon uses the knife before it finishes, Leon will do 400 damage and El Gigante will let go. If you escape quickly, 
you can reduce damage to 15 times 20 times, and the number of inputs required increases in relation to game rank. If Ashley is grabbed, she won't be released until Leon does 200 damage. Ashley will take 300 damage the moment she is grabbed, but she can't be grabbed with a special costume too. Climb onto El Gigante's back and fail to press the cut button and you'll be grabbed and thrown off. It shakes its upper body sideways after letting out a growl. It runs straight with shoulders forward. This attack will send the target far away and knock them down. This attack can break huts and rocks. It pulls out a tree, shakes it, and then throws it. This attack will break huts and knock Leon down and away. After picking up a rock from the collapsed wall, it makes an underhand throw when Leon is far away. The boulder rolls along the ground and knocks down the target. This attack can destroy huts. It vigorously shakes the scaffolding that Leon is on. If he stays on for about one second, he will drop to the floor and take damage. A fall forward after running out of health that crushes the target. Successful dodge will result in a side roll and will also prevent Ashley from being crushed, even if she's in front of El Gigante. The book says it's instant death, but sometimes I've been saved with one hit point remaining. It emerges from the blast furnace to grab Leon and drags him down too. The amount of damage taken doesn't change with rank. Attack the head and the damage to the body will increase 1.5 times. Each knife attack does 70 damage to the parasite. You can throw a grenade or a flash grenade to stun it. If you throw another flash grenade while it's kneeling, it will deal 1200 damage. Even if it touches the flames of an incendiary, it won't take damage. The enemies appearing in the smelting room will only take 25% of the damage, but that's not applied to the knife. The big cheese. Vitoras Mendez, the form of the village chief who has released the full power of the parasite living inside his body. The exposed spinal cord is completely integrated with the plaga, and it has sprouted many legs as if it were a centipede. The two long front legs extending from the back are extremely strong and flexible, and he swings the claws on the end to tear apart the enemy. Equipped with an unusually high vitality, even if the spinal cord were severed, activities are possible with only the upper body. The spine is the weak point and damage will be doubled except near the base. When his health reaches zero, he will transform and recover 700 hit points. There are a few strategies for dealing with Mendez in the book, but it says the three types of grenades can leave Mendez defenseless to attacks from other weapons. If you throw a grenade immediately after starting the battle, you should be able to hit him. Incendiary grenades inflict more damage and you can kill him with four but the book notes you can't hit him in the first form when it's bent over due to taking damage, or immediately after the second form falls to the ground. It swings its tentacles sideways. If it's in the first form and Leon is on the second floor, after stretching its back it will swing the left and right tentacles, and if the hit lands, Leon will be knocked down to the first floor. While in the first form, it's only used when Leon's health is less than 900, it twists its body to the right, and after holding for a short moment, extends its right tentacle forward, and if it hits, pierces the target. If in the second form, it quickly extends a tentacle and knocks the target down. You can dodge the first form by rolling. It swings both tentacles forward in a falling motion to knock the target down. Dodge by rolling sideways. It quickly swings the tentacles down to pull the target close. This doesn't deal any damage. It swings one hand sideways and knocks the opponent down. The left tentacle and then right tentacle are swung one at a time. When the target is hit, it will be grabbed and the hold tightened until it's strong enough to break the target's spine. The faster you escape, the less damage you'll receive, around 10 times, 40 times. The number of inputs increases with rank. The kick to free Leon won't deal any damage. If you're grabbed with the right tentacle, you'll need to press L and R, but if you're grabbed with the left tentacle, you press square and X, which is the kind of detail I love from these books. It grabs with one hand, picks up the target, and slams it into the ground, then picks it up again and throws it into the ceiling. You can escape before being thrown into the ceiling, but you'll still take damage for the hit. Vertigo, a ruthless executioner that Salazar calls his personal right-hand man. It is a perfected form of applied experiments using insect genes, and has high-level combat abilities. In addition to superior muscle strength and agility, the outer shell surrounding its body is strong enough to repel bullets. At the same time, it's flexible enough to enter the smallest spaces under floors and ceilings, to attack from unexpected angles using its elastic tail with a sharp sickle. Examine the shutter or wait 30 seconds for it to appear. It has 20,000 hit points, so you may run out of ammunition, but if you use the liquid nitrogen cylinder, you can deal three times more damage when Vertigo is frozen. 
Its HP won't regenerate, so you can return to defeat it later if you wish. As long as you keep moving, it will only use attacks you can dodge. After about 30 seconds have passed, it will unfreeze, but this can be shortened depending on how much damage it took, or if you use an incendiary grenade. A swipe with the claws on one hand while taking a step forward. If attached to something, it will attack without moving. It swings its claws with weak movements. A forward leap with claws swung down to knock over the target. A sideways turn to hit with the back of its hand. With its body twisted to the side, it hits with its tail four times, dodged by rolling sideways. Before coming out of hiding, it attacks with its tail or claws from the waterway or ceiling. The book says it will launch only one attack at a time before it finally appears, but here it attacked me twice, somehow from below and then immediately above. After coming out, it sticks its tail from the ceiling one to three times in a row and finally slashes with its claws. If it hits, the attack will stop at this point. The rocket launcher doesn't do enough damage to kill it, but damage is tripled while it's frozen. Salazar, the lord of the old castle, has fused with the giant parasite mother and his aid. Salazar's body exists in a shelter that grew from the center and it swings three long tentacles to attack enemies. Among the tentacles, the one floating in the center bears the face of his aid and has tremendous killing power with its concealed fangs. Furthermore, from the base, countless spore-like parasites have been planted from which Plaga are born one after another. Salazar has four parts, the body and three tentacles. The tentacles retreat or do nothing when their health is zero, but they will recover eventually and start to move again. After raising the center tentacle up, it hits the floor four times at changing angles. If Leon is hit, he'll be knocked down. After pulling back and aiming the center tentacle, it opens the mouth attached to the edge and quickly extends it forward. If hit, Leon will be chewed to death. The book recommends that if you're going to use a rocket launcher, wait until its mouth is open to fire. It swings down the left or right tentacle and hits the floor. It will knock Leon down if hit. Dodge by rolling sideways, but be careful you don't roll into the instant death attack. After rolling up the left or right tentacle, it swings it sideways, and if Leon is grabbed, he will be thrown to the floor below. Dodge by rolling. The left and right tentacle will use slap or grab throw once every 10 seconds. When the center tentacle is using crush, it does nothing. The center tentacle will use crush about every 10 seconds, but when you're in range of about 60 degrees in front of Salazar, it'll use the instant death bite instead. When the center tentacle's health is zero, it'll recover in about seven seconds. When hit points are zero, they'll retreat into the wall and recover after about 30 seconds. The main body doesn't take any damage when the shell is closed. The center tentacle doesn't take damage if it's attacked anywhere but the eye. The amount of damage the center tentacle takes doesn't change with game rank. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to it? U3, a life form created by combining the genes of humans, reptiles, and insects through the use of Plaga. As a result of maintaining features of each creature, it has an extremely distorted and hideous appearance. The left arm tentacle bends like a whip, and it catches prey at blinding speed. A large Plaga lurks in the spinal cord of the human part, and its large jaw can not only tear apart enemies, but also allow it to burrow underground. If you get it to less than half health, it will change into the third form. If you hit it with a rocket launcher in the first form, its health will remain at one hit point. The tentacle is swung down and slammed into the ground. It can knock Leon down. In the first form, it stretches its tentacle towards Leon's neck, then breaks the cervical vertebrae. In its second form, it extends tentacles towards Leon's feet, grabs them and pulls them closer, then tears apart his torso with its pincers. Escape quickly and only take about 20 by 20 times damage. In the second form, Leon will use the knife to escape, but this deals zero damage. A high game rank means more inputs will be required. If your health drops to one hit point while you're being grabbed, you won't be able to escape. The tentacle is extended from above to grab Leon's neck. After lifting him to the ceiling, it will break his cervical vertebrae. It pushes the pincers on its back forward to rip up the opponent. When in the third form, it will use it one to four times in a row. If the attack hits, it will stop. This attack is used to break the gate. A cutting attack from above that can be dodged. It sticks out pincers from the ground to attack one to four times, dodge with a backflip. Even if its health is reduced to zero while in the first or second form, it will have one hit point remaining, which was a weird sentence for me to say. A senior moment, perhaps. Jack Krauser. 
Leon's former partner and a specialist in close quarters combat using knives. He himself voluntarily hosted the Parasite and acquired superhuman physical abilities. By releasing the power of the Parasite, his left arm transformed into a rigid blade and attacks enemies with a terrifying slash. Furthermore, the blade can be used as a shield by spreading out like wings, boasting defensive power to even withstand a direct hit from a rocket launcher. If you fight him, he'll just run away, so you don't need to fight him at first. In order to make him flee, do 1000 damage, or do a large amount of damage with knockback. When he's stepping and backflipping, he can only be hit at the end of the move. Approach while he's backflipping and drive him into a wall. Attack the legs and the head with a knife to defeat him in 10 seconds. If you hit his head, you can deal double the damage. Explosions, like from the mine thrower and grenades, will make Krauser kneel, so you can attack with other weapons. However, the explosion itself can have no effect depending on where it happens. If you shoot where you're aiming, he'll quickly move to the side, but it's possible to let him walk into the crosshairs. So aim at an empty space and fire away. A slash with the knife. Continuous cuts when facing each other. This attack will continue until it makes contact or Krauser gets countered. During that time, all Leon can do is press the action buttons. Successful counterattack will deal 100 damage on the second to fourth successful input, determined randomly to knock Krauser down. A grab of the opponent, and if caught, will cut the neck with a knife. Continuous submachine gun fire for about 4 seconds. If Leon moves to a different floor, the attack will stop immediately. This attack has the ability to destroy objects if it continues to hit, but two can play that game. After readying his bow and taking aim, he will shoot an explosive arrow. The arrow explodes on contact with Leon, or after about 2 seconds if it hits the ground or an obstacle. A thrown grenade, it will explode if it makes contact with Leon, or 2 seconds pass. When it gets close to Leon, you can dodge with a backflip or forward roll. A quick left arm raise that will knock Leon over. If he's near the edge, he will hang from the side and set up the stomp attack. A hard stomp on Leon's hands to make him fall. Slash Krauser's leg with a knife for 0 damage and climb back up. The number of inputs required increases with rank. A swing of the left arm sideways while rotating his body, dodge by crouching. A forward leap slamming Krauser's left arm down into the ground to knock Leon over. Dodge forward or back. After pulling the left arm back and leaning forward, Krauser will lunge while stepping forward quickly. Leon can be knocked down and off the ledge. Dodge by crouching. A roundhouse kick followed by a backwards kick. When the back kick lands, Leon will be knocked down or off the ledge. A crouched leg sweep. If the hit lands, Leon will be knocked down and Krauser will attack with his left arm. It will pierce Leon's stomach. Damage to the head is doubled. Attacks to the arm shield take no damage. Osman Sadler. The founder of the religious cult, transfigured into the ruler of all plagas. From casting off the human body, he became a giant four-legged arthropod, sprouting countless tentacles, and a head with strong jaws attached to the end of a long stretched neck, extending from the center. Because there are eyes in various places on its arthropod legs, it doesn't have any blind spots. In addition, its hard outer shell can withstand ordinary firearms. It has a toughness that makes it appear invulnerable. Weapons deal very little damage to Sadler, and even a rocket launcher won't kill him instantly. But hit the eye on the tip of the tentacle and damage will be increased. Each of the four legs and tentacle have one eye. Sadler opens the tentacle eye when, knocked down, running and using the vertical tentacle attack, moving after all eyes on his legs have been destroyed. The knockdown conditions for Sadler are, Take an attack of less than 400 damage to the open tentacle eye, a leg eye has been attacked, he's been caught in an explosion, or he's been hit by the steel beams. The conditions for Sadler to stand up, about 6 seconds have passed since being knocked down, or 3 seconds when knocked down by an explosion, after the climbing knife attack, when the tentacle eye takes 400 damage or more. The eyes on the legs repeatedly open and close in intervals of about 2-3 to three seconds. Each of the eyes have health. The eyes on the front legs can be destroyed twice, and the eyes on the back legs can be destroyed once. After they are all destroyed, as long as you're still moving, Sadler will keep the tentacle eye open. When Sadler is below half health, a rocket launcher with a special rocket will be dropped. This has the effect of killing Sadler in one hit. If you saved it and use it in round 2, you can kill Sadler in one hit from the beginning of the battle. There's one condition for the rocket launcher's special one hit KO effect, and that's the moment the rocket is launched. The center of Sadler's body is within 60 degrees of Leon's front. Otherwise, it'll do the same damage as a regular rocket launcher, so you don't need to aim too carefully. 
When Saddler is down, it's better to attack with another weapon before doing the knife attack. If you deal too much damage, he will stand up again, so hit the eye with a shotgun twice and then climb. The book says when Saddler is knocked down for the first time or by an explosion, there's a limit of one attack, but I was able to attack twice and then climb. However, when knocked down by an explosion for the first time, those two conditions together make it so I could only attack once. In that case, the book says there's no time to attack, so I don't know what's up here. You can use the platform to fight with a knife. Attack upwards twice, do a 180, then attack downwards twice while on the platform. A downward swing of the tentacle with the head to tear into the enemy with its claws. When far away, after stomping his legs, he may use it while running towards the player. A horizontal swing of the tentacle with a face. It's used to knock Leon down, as well as for launching the steel beams. If Leon touches one of the many tentacles growing out of Sadler's back, he will be cut by the blades on the tip. This attack is always used when active. It grabs a steel beam on the floor with its claws and throws it. Or, using the sideways tentacle attack, will send a standing beam flying. If hit, Leon will be knocked down. Furthermore, the beams on the ground won't run out if thrown. The dodge button input is determined randomly. A grab that picks up Leon and throws him to the opposite side. A stomp with either leg. If Sadler jumps towards Leon, this will be used the moment he lands. It raises both front legs and stomps down to pierce with the tips. A forward swing of the front leg that will knock Leon down. If you attack the open eyes on the leg, it will take 0.4 times the damage. Attack somewhere other than the eye and damage will be 0.2 times. Climb does 400 damage. The flames of an incendiary and light of the flash grenade have no effect. Seeker, attack machine. If it finds you, the light will turn red and start approaching. It can be defeated with just a few shots from the handgun, but it's possible to run by them all. If Krauser is in front of you, it'll do nothing. The flying one will sound a buzzer while in front of you and continues for about 0.5 to 2 seconds. Then it will attack. There are two types of weapons, machine guns and missiles. Bomb type. The buzzer will sound only while nearby and will continue to sound for 0.5 to 3 seconds or it will self-destruct when its health reaches zero. If you shoot it while it's in the ground, you can kill it in one hit. I always liked the way enemies reacted when they were shot and the guide explains a little how it worked. A creature that is attacked will perform an action like falling down or being knocked back according to specific rules. When an enemy takes an attack, it accumulates points that aren't displayed on screen. Accumulated points return to zero before recovering from an attack action, like standing back up. The damage action depends on the type of attack received and the body part that was hit. By the way, these points do not accumulate if the enemy is in the middle of a damage action or in the middle of getting back up. Points are determined for each weapon, and basically the more powerful the weapon, the more points you can accumulate. The durability value is determined by the creature, and the higher the health, the higher the durability value. The amount of points increases with the amount of damage, like hitting a weak point. Conversely, if damage is reduced, so will the points. When I upload this video, we'll be a few days away from the RE4 remake, so what better time to revisit these monsters and the things Capcom wanted you to know about them from way back in 2006 when the book was published. I didn't include most of the strats for dealing with these creatures, because this video would be 4 hours long and you're better off watching a speedrunner. I also didn't include Sadler's form from separate ways, but if this video goes over well, maybe I'll do it someday. Thanks so much for watching, and sorry I had a bit of a cold when I made this. I'm Will from Raccoon City Cinema, and I'm going through old Japanese game guides to see what's inside, so if you'd like to support me, likes and shares really help. There are still more chapters to cover in the Bio 4 Kaitai Shinsho, and I'll get to those eventually, so please subscribe to get notified. For now, I'm going to play the RE4 remake demo again. Hey look, it's DIJ!